Hello everybody. Now this is really new for everybody because this is uh, all virtual, which is quite good for some things and it can be a bit tricky for others. I'm going to try and share my screen because I have to work out what to do. So you might have got the joining instructions already and joined uh, our studio cloud, but um, we can practice with hands. You've got a little hand symbol somewhere. Reactions, I think it's called, right towards, don't click on the red button, which is to end, to say yes, thumbs up if you're on our studio cloud already and have accounts. We've got four people coming up. So lots of people, five, lots of people are still yet to log on. I think it disappears automatically. So it's not like MS Teams. So if you just go onto that link that's in the chat, if you have problems finding the chat, let me know, but it's in those kind of buttons that shine up or flat float up when you wave your mouse down at the bottom of the Zoom. You can log into our Studio Cloud either with an account with them directly, with a Gmail, or with GitHub if you've got one. I'm just letting a few people in. So it's pretty tricky to know how people are getting on, but it would be good to get started because this is usually the hardest part. So I've got a question saying, I'm not on our Studio Cloud as I haven't registered yet. Can I use the R Studio? From yes. Feel free to use that, that's fine. If you've already got that set up. You might need packages installed. If you've already got them, that's great, but we're looking for the tidyverse. I can go through, because on our Studio Cloud, they're already done, but I do cover that because you will be using other ones, I'm sure. So the couple of people just came in probably as I was talking. I haven't introduced myself. I've just launched into this because I'm too excited to go into this. Um, we're trying to get you onto our Studio Cloud or you could use our studio if you've got it on your computer already. But what we found is that lots of people from various public sector organizations have different kinds of kits. So we're just trying to all go virtual in this new world. And to introduce myself, I'm Zoe Turner. I'm a senior information analyst in Nottinghamshire Healthcare NHS Trust, which covers Nottingham and Nottinghamshire. We do mental health services and general health services. And just to sort of like, explain myself. I've been learning R for two years. I started learning with NHSR when they first started doing these workshops and this is based on one of the original ones that was over three days. They're now taking it down to one day but that was when it was face to face and it's now virtual. So I've done one of these courses virtually and I've helped and assisted in a couple of others. So it's all a learning curve and that's one of the messages you really do need to leave from today is that no matter how long you've been learning R for, you'll, you'll have more things to learn and there's more to do. There's so much to do. Right, so I'm going to do another show of hands to see who's on our studio cloud or, or has our studio on their desktop and they're happy with having it at least installed. Sorry. Uh, That's fine. What if, we've, what if we're fine with both? I mean, uh, I, I... That's fine. Cool, yeah. great. Whichever one you prefer, that's fine. I, Just as long as you've I, got some sort of R Studio to follow along with. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, I, I have no expertise or experience to, to say if I prefer one or the other at the no, moment. No, I'm going to flip between the two, I have to say, oh. because I'm going to have to show you something that can only work on your desktop, but we're trying to work off the cloud. So they, they are slightly different because they're slightly different networks. Um. Uh, any in preference that you'd rather us follow you along on if we have the choice between both? The majority of people I think are going for the cloud. Go for the cloud. Cool. Have a go at it. Because I'll if you're going to do other workshops as well, they'll definitely be on the cloud. Cool. So Thank you. give it a go. And if it doesn't work out, switch to your desktop. So it's a good one. Right. Is there anybody who's going to go for it? Because these things flash up. Let's go for the other way around. Is anybody having any problems? And also to let people know as well, we're recording this because a few people are coming in after we've gone through the preamble. I'm not getting any hands or any problems, but I guess things are ticking along as you're getting in. I don't really want to launch in and leave people behind when you're still waiting for your accounts to be set up and join and stuff. So flash a hand if you need some time. It's a bit like somebody said that uh, this virtual stuff is a bit like the old sciences of the Victorian days. Where is anybody there? <laughs> Make a sign if you're there. Because everybody's. Can't hear you, I, can't, 
I can't see your concentrating voices. Uh, voices? <laughs> concentrating faces. So I, I just Oh, hello, my, Mike. Hi. Hello. I just have my camera turned off because my room's a state at the moment. Oh, that's fine. I've, I've put so... plants up just to cover up stuff. Oh, that's fine. Brilliant. Yeah, I think in Zoom you can blur your background, but I can't remember because we, we usually use MS Teams. So as we're starting on, I will did I was sharing my screen. I will share it again. I think it got lost because it's technology. So is that sharing? Yep. Yes. I have two things up at the moment. So I've got the R Studio Cloud on the left. I thought it was up, so I do apologize. It disappeared. And I've got the slides on the right. So I'll be trying to flip between the two so that you can see them. In the original, when you're in person, we had two help, two people, one to help, one to kind of live code, and one to do the presentation. So they always had two screens, which was really useful. So I'm trying to replicate that on one screen. And I realize that can be quite difficult if people have only got their laptop screens. So please just follow along if you can. Don't worry too much if you get left behind in typing, but going to the presentation, it can get quite confusing. This will be recorded, you can use it again, and I'll be doing future courses as well. So I have no problems with people coming back and doing it multiple times. So uh, I must admit, I've had, a I can see a few people have already joined here. So when you go into our Studio Cloud, I think you click on, because I've seen Rob, Dom, you've done this. I think you just click on to the intro, don't you? Um, and it opens up in your own workspace. Is that right, Dom? I'm not sure, because I think I've got admin rights, which really confuse things. So when I go into it, I see it completely. Um, yes, you, you can get into the, the R Studio uh, Cloud workspace and you can click on the individual presentations um, as PDFs. So when, but when you went into R Studio Cloud and clicked on that intro, it did it open up in your own workspace? Did it just create your own new project or did you have to do something with it? Um, it seemed to just create a new project. Um, yeah, I think it's because I've got admin rights. I go into the original, so I'm, I'm actually Chris Maney here because yeah. who, who doesn't want to be Chris Maney? <laughs> There's lots of Chris's here. There's lots of Chris's involved in R. You'll get used to them. So we've preloaded everything in our studio um, because it's the cloud. So we've got all the packages that you need, a few extra, and all of the files that you can get from the GitHub. The nice thing about this course is that it, everything is open, so you can fetch it from GitHub whenever you require. If anybody needs any help, um, flash up your hand or put something in the chat. I'll try and catch the hands as they flash, but they do disappear on Zoom. So just sort of like try and get my attention somehow. Dom's going to keep an eye out for things as well. So we can, he could always interrupt me and stop me from waffling. So we'll start with the session. Um, as I said that this was virtual, it was also over a whole day. We're going to only go to about two o'clock today because we all have to go off to another workshop, which is the public health one, well, not everybody, but I do recommend that one as well. Um, there's a lot of courses this week and uh, courses this week and talks next week. So there's a lot going on, so we'll crack on. We would do introductions normally, but there's a lot of people in here. So what I would like to do, because I'm not getting any hands generally, is a flash of hands if you use Excel. Going over, for, over half, that's looking good. Okay, gonna let them all disappear. Timing it, oh, it's timing, yeah. And now a flash of hands for those who use SQL. And don't worry if you've already said you use Excel, that's fine. Oh, it counts them as well, it tells me how many. So it's about half and half, and I think some people do both. I myself use both, so I'll try to refer to both in some of the things that we do, we cover. If you bear with me, sorry, because I put notes. Yeah, I can't see my notes. I'm skipping the examples for brevity. What I would suggest is going through the course material in your own time. It's designed to be read as you go through. So I think it would be possible if you're a person who learned through reading, these would be very good. They're very clear and concise. I've used them to train with, and I'm following the instructions in there. 
if you're like me, like a person who needs to have what's written down, spoken to you, then this is the place to be. But it's a good place just to go through. The first bit I'm skipping are just the examples of R. I'm not really going to sell it to you because I think being here is kind of already sold to you. You want to learn it. So let's just begin. So R Studio Cloud is a bit confusing because it's, it's in the cloud. I'm going to refer to the desktop now. So I'll just show you the example of my R if I've got it open on my screen. I have to move my thing over. So R and R Studio need to be installed together on your machines. And this is what it looks like. This is my desktop rather than the cloud. So uh, they're both software applications and you need to request both of them if you have a like a lockdown network computer from your IT. Some IT are more amenable to having it installed than others. So if you have any issues with it, the community of NHSR community is a good place to come to try and get some feedback about how to get that on to try and convince people within IT that it's OK to have that on. R is the bit that's underneath our studio like um, a command line, very, very basic outlay. I'm just trying to think of words. So this is trying to represent the fact that it's under the bonnet. This is what our studio is based on and all the packages that we use sometimes refer to R. R is at the bottom of everything. It's very basic in its structure, but it's very powerful, which is why sports cars are all stripped down to the bare necessities. They work really well, but they're quite uncomfortable. And this is what R is like. It, it's it's brilliant, but it's not very intuitive because you have to know your software programming. So our studio is built on top of it. It's more user friendly, GUI version of things. So it's uh, user friendly and you have more options within it. It's a little bit more getting closer to like the Microsoft products in their friendliness. It's just got the comforts of a kind of like a prestige car I'm trying to think of rather than a racing car. So our studio is really the thing you're opening, but you need to be aware of when you're putting it onto your computer or asking for it, that you also need R underneath it. The two are inseparable, and I've made this mistake myself in the last course is forgetting that R's there. So I asked somebody to install our studio, and of course it then says, you need R to run this. Thankfully, it's quite clear in its messages and the person worked it out, but I'd forgotten, completely forgotten, because it makes it so easy to not use R. Opening R Studio opens a new R session, which that's why you just, you, like me, you might forget that you've even got that. I'm getting lots of dings, so I don't know if that's missing. So going back to, this is the console. I'll get rid of mine so you can see the cloud. The majority of people are on the cloud. So I'm just going to explain, and we look the same between desktop and cloud, it's just that mine will look like yours. You have these three windows when you first open them up. You've got the console here, which is written out here. And I don't know what the names are of these two sections here, but this is where you've got the other options with your files and other tabs, plots, packages, help from viewer. And this has got some other bits along the top. So what I'm going to try and do is help you follow along with me if you can, if not just watch. But what we're going to do is use the console by typing PI times two. It's really a glorified calculator, but it's quite good. And I have used it as a calculator to get some numbers. Very good for maths. You can do some other things in it, but there is a better way, as it says in the presentation slide. This doesn't stay. This is like the command line, as you might see if uh, people from IT or you've done things with your computer, when you type it, it then scrolls along. So you get the history while you're in it, but it doesn't keep the history forever. You can't refer back to it later. So we need to get this editor screen here. And the way we do that is there's a couple, like Microsoft, there are more than one ways of getting a new script. So if you click on the cross, the green cross in the top and do new file, you can select our script. If you go to file, new file, you can have our script. And what you can't do on the cloud, because it opens a new browser window, but you can do 
on your mic on your desktop which I've lost my R studio is a shortcut which is control shift n which it says here on the presentation slide my R studio on my desktop seems to keep disappearing I can't get it back that won't work in the browser because being on the cloud, you're working it through the browser and not through RStudio. So RStudio has a number of shortcut keys. I use my shortcut keys on my keyboard all the time. I'm, I'm not so much of a mouse user, but these other options of finding your new script are possible if you have a mouse. So I'm gonna do a new one by clicking on the little green cross and getting a script. So this is called the script. Now the editor, is very flexible in regards to this so you can as it says you can copy paste and save text it's more forgiving you can save it as well so you could write lots of things so i'm just going to write what it says on there which is library gg and so just following what it says on the thing it repeats itself so I ran this using control and enter, as it says on the presentation slide. It sends it to the console, which you can see copied down here, and then runs it there. But this script, you can write it much more in there. You can do several lines of scripts. It's a little bit like a SQL script. It only runs when you actively run it. You can save that. Um, but what's slightly different to SQL is that when you run it, it doesn't send it somewhere else to run, which it does structure I'm trying to think of program structure Charlene you've got a hand up sorry it's a tiny hand are you okay Charlene you okay I'll keep oh hand down it, it was from earlier Zoe oh uh, was it it got stuck was, yeah. oh thank you might be, might be painful to have hands up. Great, Charlene. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why yours got stuck, Charlene. Everybody else has disappeared really quickly, and you're, I do apologise about that. Putting on the spot. So the good thing about this, and also for SQL users, it's a little bit like writing notes in your um, Excel cells if you're trying to leave yourself little notes, which I do in my Excel. You can comment your code, which is really good practice. So if you share your code, and even for your future self, because invariably you, you go along and do stuff. And I look at my old code and go, what was I thinking there? Why was I doing that? Why is that here and not there? If you put yourself a little note, when you first start off, your script could be covered in these notes. That's fine. As time goes on, you become more proficient, your notes reduce, but just use notes all the time if you can. And so you do that by commenting. So it's a hashtag. So you write notes. This is a idea to run code as I did quickly before you can do control and enter or you can click here which is I think the run the current line selection you don't have to highlight everything as you see I'm not actually running anything because it's commented but if I run this you just have to be on the line you don't have to copy the entirety of it for the SQL users I've picked up that habit because you have to highlight just the bits you want. But the way our studio and our work is that you're running chunks of code. So you don't have to worry about it running the entirety. You have to stipulate run everything in one go. So that's really nice. As I said, I like to use shortcut keys. So I do control enter quite frequently in the middle of chunks of code or at the beginning of the code which is really nice. It removes that keystroke of having to highlight things. Now, yeah, as you saw, yeah. Can we just pause and check that yes. everyone can do those little little bits? Because at least a couple of people are saying in the chat that they, they're just like not working through yet. I can't see the chat. Thank you. So, uh, for me, when I, <clears throat> so the first two, pi times two and 37 divided by 12, they both worked for me fine. Uh, when I did library tidyverse, uh, it attached uh, eight packages for me, right. which were fine, but then it came up saying conflicts between DP, yes. LYR. Yes, lovely. Yes, right. that's fine. Are you on the cloud or are you on your desktop? I, I'm doing it on the cloud at the moment. Uh, okay, I, that's fine. I'll explain those bits. That's fine. It has worked. It's a bit worrying because it gives you lots of warnings, but it has yeah, worked. Cool, cool. I, no, I've that's got, fine. No, that's um, good. 
I've got the desktop on too, but I'll leave that for now. I'll leave it. <laughs> yeah. It'll become really familiar with you, so you'll, you'll be fine. Is everybody else okay? Any other comments say, Zoe, on things? Zoe, the, the original code just, just adds um, a GG plot, and you, you've taken I know. a nice shot. You might want to explain the, the yeah. difference between that and tidyverse. Yes, so I'm, I've switched around the course. The course usually starts with ggplot2, which is a chart visualization package. I'm skipping it round to manipulating the data, first of all, which is using something called dplyr. But these are all in tidyverse. I think ggplot2 is in tidyverse as well. I will explain it, sorry. But that comes in a little bit. Is everybody okay uh, so on that how, bit? How did we make the top left untitled one bit? You go up to either file, new file, and then our script. Yeah, got it. You got it. Yeah. Or there's a little cross, a green cross, like the Swiss Army knife, but in green. And if you click on that, it gives you similar options. Sweet, lovely, thank you. Fabulous, everybody else okay? Yeah, just a quick question. Yeah. I'm having to use the, um, the desktop package. So I, I did yeah. the library tidyverse, and I've used your top screen and seeing what's going on and it, I'm following all that. But now having done library tidyverse, it says error package or name space load, load files for tidyverse. There's an error message basically. Okay. Um, there is no, there's no package, package called CLI. Oh, okay. Right. That's a, this is a, an example of desktops because we have various types of, um, so, uh, hardware, not software, hardware across all the public sectors. Some of them are locked down, some of them are not, some of them have uh, faster computers than others. I think there are a few problems with Tidyverse when you're loading them onto some work computers. We've had this in my trust, where not all the packages, because it's, it's a group of packages, I will explain a little bit more in, in a later stage. Some of them didn't come through in time, or not in time, but they're kind of restricted or they're out of date, so you get these messages what we could do is try and solve it now if you could you share your screen i'm not sure if you can on this very easily i'm not sure if i can see screens too easily on this actually Zoe, yeah um he might need to install the packages yeah well the individual um, no just entirely installed, so um oh not at all okay good one yeah are you sending the link to how to install it because i think we're um, going to cover a little bit yeah. in a bit just you could try typing into your your um into your into, into your um uh, uh browser um your your editor just to show install dot packages at home or the other way of installing a package. While that one's going on ahead, I'll just go on about how the R Studio looks and how you can change the looks. We will go on to the packages in a bit because we will go through installing packages and what they are and why we do that and what we're talking about. And it's all very detailed at the moment. But as you saw before, my own R Studio, which briefly came on with black, black screen with white text, which I find easier to use. It can be a bit too small on the text. Um, you know, making the, the R Studio look comfortable and more familiar, not more familiar, easy to use over time is possible to do. Even in R Studio Cloud, if you go to Tools and then Global Options. Now, this was what something that we needed to do when we were doing this in the live versions because we'd have it on a screen and the text would be really tiny, and you need to make it much bigger so people at the far back could read it. It's not necessary so much when you're on a computer, but you still may want to change it so that it's black with white text and, and to make it more friendly to read. There's another bit that's an option as well as for some reason, and I don't know why they've never really changed this, but for our studio, it saves your whole workspace when you leave it. And that's actually not a good idea because you may get something running because you've run several different things at once and they're left in there, you go back in there, you run your script, it works for you because you've got something that you've loaded and didn't realize that you've deleted since in your scripts, as we refer to them, 
you hand that to somebody else and they can't work it. So one of the things that they always recommend, and I don't know why it's default because they always recommend it, is to untick the restore our, our data into workspace at startup. So if you look at the presentation slide, it's unticked. So you can do that if you want to. You can leave it so that your workspace always is as you've left it. But the recommendation is always to remove that so it just clears everything when you shut it down. The next bit that I was going on about, which was changing the text and the, the colours and things. So if you go to appearance on the options, you can change the, the text size to 11 and you can change to darker. It's usually around this one. I quite like that, but you can look through them all and choose and select your, your favourite to make it easier for you to read. And then you just click apply. Is that OK for everybody to read? off my screen when it's black with white text. Put your hand up if you prefer it to go back. Don't worry if you prefer it to go back, that's absolutely fine. No preferences, brilliant. So now this is the bit about packages. And I do apologize, it sort of leaps around. It kind of assumes that you know things and that can be really frustrating. It's like, well, we've not even mentioned packages before. Now we're talking about them. Those are slightly example bits because you, you kind of have to start with a bit and then go back. So I'm gonna explain packages now. So the reference here is that they're a little bit like your phone. When you go on to your, um, I've got an Android, I don't really know about iPod, iBits. We go on to um, Google Play, we look for the app and then we install it. So it's always on your phone, but it's not always running. So I've got all sorts of things on there. And our studio is like that. You can download lots of packages that will sit on your computer, but they don't run. That's when you have to call them. And it's, when it says here, it's, it's extending the capabilities of the basic R. Underneath a lot of these programs, if you keep going back and back and back and back, there'll be some base R references. So as I referred to before with the, the sports car, stripped down, that bit is the fast software looking program of R. But what's really nice with packages and RStudio is that people have built on and on and on to make it more human friendly. And underneath it's computer friendly. So as I sort of in, ran over really quickly before, you download your app and our terms, you install your packages, but then to run it, you open the library. So that was the bit that Darren was sort of looking at before when you did library tidy first. I think we think that the error is related to it not being on your computer to start with. So you're calling something that's not there. You're saying, open this book, and they're like, well, it's not in the library. And that's one of the issues that you may have. So you can install lots and lots of packages. And in fact, I'll go there, there's 14,000 packages. I'm sure that's an underestimation. So there's, there's loads, absolutely loads. Anything that you want will be in a package. If it's not, at some point in your R career, you'll be able to build it yourself, I'm pretty sure. So when we install packages, we do install.packages brackets and then the commas. Now they can be, not commas, they're speech marks. They can be single speech marks or double speech marks. So one of the things I haven't mentioned is that being a programming language and being a particular one, this doesn't apply to all, I don't know. Unlike SQL, which is not case sensitive, R is very much case sensitive. So your letters all need to be in the small case for your install packages. You can't have a capital T and then the rest being lowercase and you can't do it all in uppercase, it will fail, it will not recognize it. But what it isn't so specific about is when you're doing, I'm just doing the quotation marks. And also there's a back tick, which is a new one for me, but it's something that is used in R, which is right next to the one key on your keyboard. So that is another reference or another kind of way that you'll see code written with um, speeches around things, which is a back tick. So when you install it, you have speech marks around it. And when you call it in the library, you don't have that. It also says that you need it to be open for every new session. So not necessarily each script. So if I opened a new script here, if I do another one, it will still know that you've op I've opened um, or I've loaded, let's say, sorry, tidyverse. But if I closed everything down and then opened a new session, it will say, I can't see tidyverse. So 
that's the first step if it ever comes up with an error is just to make sure you've loaded it and it, it's it's quite a new thing to remember so what we tend to do is always put them at the top so you know what it is that you're loading and also that you can find them quickly and you can load them rather than putting them throughout the script on top of things that you may be using so you may start off with tidyverse and then go a bit lower down and use the plotting package which is called ggplot2 but it's good to, good to keep it at the top there are lots of packages i said but this thing called cran is a com uh, there's a there's a term for it i need to google it it's an acronym it's the repository where people who built packages have said please put this onto your repository and it gets checked by a group of people to make sure it fits all the right things it's got the right checks in it and it's all very um sort of like approved status of package now not every package is on cran not every network will allow other than cran uh, but quite a few nhsr people of the community have built their own packages which they share through github through their own accounts so i use those and uh, our security and our it is okay with us using packages from all over because they view it as being very low security risk and some people don't want to put their things into CRAN because they're updating it a lot or they just don't really want to go through those checks. Because once you put it on CRAN, you change it, then people are going to CRAN and getting the old things. But that's where you'll find Tidyverse, you'll find all the individual packages around Tidyverse kind of things that we use and a couple of things like statistical process control charts. There's a package on there, which is really good for QI charts too. And a few other things. We do a lot of stuff with R. It started off as a statistical package. So it's kind of, it started, I guess, in competition with things like SPSS or Stata. MATLAB comes up a lot. But the thing about R for me is that it's, it's kind of gone into areas which are not necessarily in those mathematical realms of statistics as well. You can do maps, you can create PowerPoint presentations in it, you can take PowerPoint, I think it's you can take PDFs and make them into R scripts, you can create Word documents and you can do all sorts of things really and there are things that people use it for that it wasn't originally intended for and that, that's actually quite good, it makes it incredibly flexible. So the package that we sort of referred to and skimmed over a bit is Tidyverse. Tidyverse has been created, I think this is fair to say, by some people who are involved with our studio one of the prominent people is Hadley Wickham. He's been a contributor to a number of these packages, all in the open. He's a person who's written a few books and has some recommendations in this course. And even when he writes his books, he's put chapters out in the open for people to comment back, which is a new way of working, certainly for me, where everything can be contributed to. They don't accept all contributions, but they do listen to a few things, particularly around bugs and developmental things. It's a friendly place uh, to sort of contribute to programming languages. Tidyverse is a selection of, there we go, is a selection of popular packages in one area. So they all link to each other, they all work with each other, they use the same kind of, not, uh, that's a bit fair, unfair to say, they use similar grammar structures. So you get used to the way of thinking in Tidyverse. The, it's not the only package or area to, I say package, it's a package of packages, so I'm not really sure how to refer to that. It's not the only thing out there, there are rivals to it, even base R is a rival to some of the things in R, in Tidyverse. So you will hear people use other things or say, oh I don't use Tidyverse, or oh it's a bit slow, I like to use something else. So it's not the be all and end all. When I've learned SQL, I kind of learned that you've got one answer to things and maybe a little bit of variation, Microsoft Excel, you have lots of different ways of doing things. And I'd say our studio is more, well not our studio, our packages are a bit more like Excel. You've got more input into doing things different ways than you do for SQL as a kind of like a comparator. So Tidyverse takes a bit longer to load and it takes a bit longer to sort of install, not that much. It was quite fast on the cloud, but it's because it's a package of packages. It needs a new word rather than package of packages. So what we're using specifically and what was sort of raised before when it showed these warnings is that there are several packages in there and there's sometimes it's what it's telling you is that sometimes some of the things that you use in one package will also be the same in another so there's a conflict it's not saying this hasn't worked it's saying 
Well, this dplyr filter also filter appears in this other package. So just to let you know, this other package that it refers to is a statistical package, which we don't use in the course and you may not use in, <laughs> thanks Mike. Oh, is that a question? Is that a yes or a question, Mike? Sorry. No, 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 it was just a thumbs up. Uh, thanks. For a thumbs up rather than a hands up. Thing. Okay, yeah, I was just checking because I thought, oh, it might not be a thumbs up. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So they just, they just, they get these messages, they're called warnings in um, Tidyverse specifically, and they're quite useful. They're just telling you that these things might happen. So just to be aware. So we load it by saying library Tidyverse, which is what I launched right into at the beginning and never explained what I was doing, which is so frustrating. So I do apologize. And that's the end of that particular one. So I'm just gonna launch into another one. And then at the end of this project bit, we might take a break, okay? But if anybody needs a break, I can't see you anyway, feel free to just take, take off, that's no problem. So projects are really, really useful in our studio. And I started off by not using them and got into a bit of a pickle. Uh, a lot of people probably use network drives. And one of the things that I really struggle with are the pathways to drives. So mine is like dash dash NHS, blah, 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 blah. It's not a real pathway. I didn't really understand it. So I couldn't get my, my scripts to install the right data because I couldn't tell it where it was because being a computer program, I need to be precise. I need to say this data that I want is here. It can't see my network drives, but projects is a nice way of getting around it. That's my reason for using it. There are plenty of other reasons for using it. One of the things you'll find in quite a few people's bits of code is this working directory. Is the, this is what you can see down here where it says file control in the working directory. It doesn't really work so much here because you're on the cloud. So you, you don't really shift between projects as much as you would say in your own Actually, I will show you my desktop because I think this is where I've written these comments and I can't see comments, I think. Yeah, it's a bit awkward, is that? Um, in my R studio on my desktop, I will show you this. You can't necessarily see it. It's like a quick show. <laughs> like hide one with another. So I'm on my desktop here. So the thing about working directories on the cloud is you're in your working directory because you're in the project in the cloud, which is a bit awkward. So I'm going to show you on a desktop where you have hundreds of files, hundreds of directories, and they're all over the place, as you can see there, it's a big mess. So I'll just create a new script. Library, tidyverse. As you can see, I've got lots of packages in there. So it's just got something running there. If I wanted to go to a file and say data and then raw, but then I wanted to go back to where I'd started with my data, where I'd put my data, there's a little arrow here, which doesn't show you what it says there, but it says um, here, you can usually see your working path directory at the top of this console. Was that somebody talking or? Sorry, was- uh, Oh, hi. <laughs> okay. So that takes you back to where you were, which is really useful because this is a tiny screen and you can end up in all sorts of places and then go, oh, where, where was I? I? I need to go back. So I go back or I can see where I am. I'm not sure what that is. I think it's just there. It tells you where it is and that's, I'm not getting much information because I'm on my network drive. I think it's not very useful. So the the file structure can kind of go anywhere and do anything and it can be, if it's like my email, my, my thing, it's just, it's a mess. So your project, it says here, organisation is key and my, my screen is not organised as you can see there. there's all sorts of things going on there. Yeah, uh, you need to find your files and it can be really frustrating when you're trying to refer to something and it doesn't get it and you just don't know where, it, yeah. it's frustration and cognitive load as it says on there, definitely. So I learned projects with NHSR training when I did it years ago, and I've not done anything else since because it's so useful. It does make it so easy to look between things. And it's up here where you've got in the top right hand corner, you won't have that necessarily on the R project cloud. So the R cloud, because it is in a project in itself. So this only really works on the desktop. 
But as I say, these, these slides are available. So when you do get onto your desktop and you think, oh, I need to find a project, how do I do it again? Follow the slides through again. And I'm sure it will be uh, quite self-evident. So in here, you can see that I've got lots of projects. And all I do is I just switch between them as I need them. And I don't need to think, where is it? Where did I keep it? I'm looking at my last used. If I needed to get new ones, I do have to navigate to them. But I tend to go to only a few each time, which is quite good. It's also good when you're sharing a script with somebody, is if you set your working directory to, say, your C drive, your My Documents with your name in the folder, they won't see that. So they'll go to that, the, the script will look for that folder and it'll say, I don't know where Zoe Turner in My Documents is. Failed. So if you use a project, it refers to the project area that you're in, the folder that you're in, so wherever your project is. So I don't think this one's a pretty good one, but if I show you presentations, As you can see on your R Studio Cloud, you have lots of things in your file area. Oh, my presentations. If I go to presentations, you can see I've got different files in the presentation folder and I've got different subfolders and it kind of keeps it in a neat area. So if I just want to go to the one area, I just go to that main one. I can navigate here, which is what I did before. I was just going up a folder and dot, dot, dot here is really useful because it takes you to your file explorer as well, which is so easy to navigate and look for things because it's more familiar and it's a bigger screen. So that's when our studio comes into its own because it has lots of, ooh, can't get rid of it, lots of different things in our studio that you can click on to, to find stuff. We're going to create a new project. There you go, I put my note there saying it only works on computers and not our studio cloud. So if I do a new one and you'll just follow because the problem is you're in your project. To create a new one for the cloud, you have to go outside of that project to create a new one. So you don't need to know. But on a desktop, if you click on new project, because this, this button here doesn't exist in the cloud. New project. Mm, don't save. I hope I didn't lose anything there. Doubt it. And you get these three options, new directory, existing directory, and version control. So the new directory, when it says directory, it means new folder. So you might have one in existence. I think I do. So I'm going to browse for a new one. I'm going to look for NHSR, introduction to R, and I'm going to put it in there. And you can have more than one project in the same folder, which I just re realized recently. So you can have duplicates. And I'm going to I didn't call it workshop R, which I was supposed to, but I didn't do new project. I put it in another folder. When it says directory, it means folder. Is everybody following or questions or got any comments? Am I going at an okay speed? Particularly as you can't follow this bit on R Studio. Yeah, got one thumbs up. I assume quiet means that you're still here. Hopefully you're still here. So this is now my working directory, which makes it so much easier for me to just forget where I put it now because I've put it in a, I've now got it somewhere. So everything that I create or if I, if I do something that spits out into a folder, it will go here. So I don't have to worry about whether it's gone to my downloads or something else. Where did that go? It all stays in this very one, this, this one folder. Which is, uh, is, click on there. You can see actually everything in that existing directory. So I already had lots of stuff in there. Even had Train the Trainer as another project in there. And just to refer back to this thing again, if I can get to it, you can just switch between your projects. Just as a word of warning, of caution, R Studio runs off your RAM, off your computer. SQL runs off the hard drive, I suspect, off your computer or even a server, I should say. So it's much more stable and powerful for kind of big data loading. R can cope with it, but the thing I've noticed, and this is my word of caution, is you can open more than one project. And even if you're not doing a lot in them, it can chew up your RAM. So if you're doing some other things on your computer, it can suddenly just freeze because you've overloaded the computer. So it's just to, just to understand that R and SQL work separately and differently. 
it, to put it in context with Microsoft, it's a bit like when you're trying to open half a million rows in Microsoft Excel, not CSV file, and it suddenly goes, oh, no, no, it's too much. Can't do this anymore. And that's our studio. We'll get, get like that if you open too many projects and have more hanging around on the computer, which I have done. I didn't lose anything, though. It's very good at not losing stuff. It just kind of freezes on me. And that's the end of that. So would everybody like, it's like a five minute break. Or do you want to, yeah, there's a nod. So I can see one person, so we're going for I'd five like minutes. I'd like a five minute break, yes. Yes, yes. If you have any questions from that or comments, don't want to speak up, that's fine. Just put them in the um, 